Hello, for this lesson we are going to be inspired by uh, an American artist. Her name it was Atel Adnan and uh, I showed her uh, a couple pieces of her work uh, right before I started talking. Uh, she was born in 1925 and she just passed in 2021. Um, and she was very well known, very simple uh, compositions abstract art and what she let uh when she was making her art she let the colors that she used uh speak to whoever uh was looking at her at her work it was um mostly you know it was the way that she used different colors next to each other uh just you know really rich colors really vibrant colors and so that's what we want to do uh, today. They were just blocks of color. So I, you should have a piece of copy paper. This is uh, we're going to work with some ideas first for our composition, and then we will take choose our favorite one out of the four that we have made and. Then we have a, you know, you should have a piece of mixed media paper and we will do a larger uh, version of that favorite design. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is fold your copy paper. I'm going to put the mixed media paper off to the side. And we call that hamburger style. Uh, because it's more like a hamburger bun and then you want to open up your paper and you're going to fold it hot dog style because it's in the shape of a hot dog bun and so when you open it up you will have four uh, different rectangles uh, to practice in now if you want to and I want you to work with pencil on this project I again am using hello Maya I am using a black marker so that you can see it better on the screen. So what you can do is take your pencil, Maya, honey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach an art lesson. I know, I love you madly. Okay, enough, enough. All right, so you can, if it's easier to see, you can trace the grid lines so that you can see your, you could use pencil too on this. Gosh, I didn't do a very good job of tracing a straight line, but you get, you get, I think it was because the dog was bothering me. And I've got an almost dry marker, so we'll see if this one treats me any better. Okay, so you have four different compositions that you could make. Okay, so the rules of this project is that you can only only draw three lines and one of them needs to be a circle I'll demonstrate on my first one and you can place the circle anywhere you want one needs to be the horizon line remember the horizon line is where the earth seems to meet the sky so it needs to be horizontal and straight across and then the third line is a wobbly line so we can make this line any shape that you want so one two three that's it so I'll show you some more variations okay we'll do our horizon line that's one. We'll do our circle. And if you want to trace around something to do your circles, it's fine, but you don't have to. You can just freehand it like I'm doing. So that's our circle line. And then we're going to do a wobbly line. Okay. So that kind of looks like it's a, a mountain with the sun setting or rising over the mountains, right? Okay, let's try another version. Here is our horizontal line. We'll put our circle. 
circle there. So I'm moving around, changing the size a little bit. And then we're gonna do our wobbly line like that. So one, two, three. Okay, here's our last one. I'm gonna do the circle a little bit different. So here's our horizon line. And then I'm only going to do part of a circle because I want it to look like the sun setting. And it's sun setting it over some water. So I'm going to do my wobbly line down here instead of above the horizon line. I'm going to put it below the horizon line. So it kind of looks like a beach going out into the water, right? All right. So you take some time to decide to draw these. Remember, horizontal line, circle, wobbly line. That's it. And then when you're done, I want you to choose your favorite. I think I like this one with the setting sun. So I'm going to put a little star here or a little mark, whatever you want to do. This is the one that you want. And the other thing you can do is fold your paper so that you don't get confused by the other compositions. And we'll go with that one. I like the balance of it. I like that the sun's going down. And I like this idea of kind of the beach uh, jetting out into the ocean. So you can turn off the the video and get to the point where I am and then come back and join me again. Okay, so you've chosen your your favorite composition and so I want you to put that beside you so you can see it and pick up your pencil again and we're going to enlarge this composition to our bigger piece of paper. Okay, and then we're going to do our half circle for our sun. And then we're going to do the beach for our wobbly line. Okay? Okay, now I don't want you to go over these pencil lines because one of the things that is nice about Atel Adnan's work is that those colors came right up to each other. So that makes them contrast better than having a black line separating them, okay? So we want our colors to, to butt right up. Now, you can paint with acrylics if you want. You can paint with your watercolors. Um, I do want you to really use a lot of pigment in your watercolor if, because we want these to be nice, vibrant colors. I've opted to do oil pastels. And I believe you have some oil pastels there. Um, if not, you and you want to use a dry medium, you could also use a marker or you can use crayons and just make sure that you really put the, the color down dark um, on these. Okay? So, uh, what if you're going to be using oil pastels, <coughs> I just want you to make remember it's been a while since we've used oil pastels is that you want to keep your hand from smudging because these have a lot of wax in them and they will smudge. So I'm going to start off. This is going to be my beach coming out, which is not a sandy beach. It is a grassy beach. And then we're going to 
color that. Try to keep the color as intense as possible. So take your time. We don't want a lot of white showing through. And we can also take some paper toweling when you're done, if you're using the oil pastels and kind of smudge it a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies are bad this weekend. And if you are using your oil pastels, you might need to unwrap some of the paper because we'll be using quite a bit of the pastel for this one. And you can keep going back over this. Again, if you're using well, with acrylic paints, you know that it's going to be a bold color anyway, right? If you're going to be using, if you're using the watercolors, you just need to make sure that you're using nice, bright, intense colors. like we've got some thunder on the outside here. Okay, so I'm going to wrap some paper toweling around my finger and just kind of smooth that out a little bit. I have found that this brand of oil pastels really doesn't smudge very well. So I'm going to use this box up and then find myself a better brand because oil Pastel should blend together. Okay, so that's one color, and then we're going to do this for the water. I'm going to use a nice bold blue. And like I said, we're going to get that those colors right together. Instead of having them separated with a black line. So I'm going to I did my pencil line a little bit darker than what Hopefully you did. I want to use light pencil lines. <clears throat> so the blue is covering up the pencil line better than the green did. And so I'm using the blue to go right along up to that pencil mark and cover it up a little bit.
And I just thought, you know, if you have chalks, which are called soft pastels, which I know at one point you did, if you have uh, chalk, you can use that too for this project. Broke that piece off. Again, make sure you go back over the places where you have a lot of white, and then I'm going to also smudge it again with this blue feels like it might smudge better but you don't want to use the same spot on your paper toweling it's not really smudging too much better Definitely not buying this brand again, but it'll work for our purposes. Okay, so see what a nice contrast we have when those colors are coming right up to each other. Okay, so I'm going to turn it this way so I don't get my hand uh, here. And I am going to, oh, I thought I had a, I'm going to use an orange for the sun. I'm going to think this is a, whoops, okay, let me try that again. It's okay guys, it's just rain. I'm going to bring that. Orange and blue really provide a nice con contrast because they're considered complementary colors on the color wheel. They are across from each other. Red and green are across from each other. So they're complementary, purple and yellow. So they look really good together. Move it just a little bit. There we go. All right. So the last one, I kind of smudged that a little bit, but that's okay. I will cover it up with the red. Hmm. 
don't know if you noticed that, but my electricity just flickered on and off. Sure, I've had a lot of springtime sun, uh, thunder showers and storms. So again, we're gonna put that right up to this red. get to the last block you got to be careful about where you put your fingers so I'm gonna do this last little edge after I get all of this other done do want to get all the way up to the edge. Now you want to put your fingers in an even smaller space. And then at the very last one, you can put your finger on the right. Okay. Why I even tried that it didn't really move much at all but let's turn this around and look at our creation it's bold the colors really pop and I like it sometimes simple is better and hats off to Ms. Adnan for inspiring our lesson today thank you